Our planet is Earth. It's not just beautiful, it is rich in natural resources, which gives us the possibility of life itself. One of the unique corners of our planet is Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a huge country. Its territory occupies more than 2,700,000 square kilometers. The ninth largest country in the world. It is difficult to find a place more beautiful and more serene. The nature of Kazakhstan is so rich that it covers mountains, deserts, steppes, forest, and water ecosystems. Stunning panoramas of landscapes are combined with the diversity of flora and fauna. Flora and fauna is represented by more than 172 species of mammals, about 500 species of birds, more than 150 species of fish, and more than 6,000 species of plants, many of which are listed in the Red Book. Ecosystems of Kazakhstan provide the population with many benefits. These are food, medicinal raw materials, fuel, water, and clean air. For example, on average, about 40,000 tons of fish are caught annually for the needs of the population. And more than two and a half million people live in forest areas and use the benefits of the forests. The forest and grassland ecosystems of Kazakhstan retain more than 9 billion tons of carbon. This is a significant reservoir of the positive carbon compared to the carbon dioxide emission of the world's largest emitter of greenhouse gases, China, in three and a half years. Absorbing the capacity of forest and pastures in Kazakhstan compensates for about 6% of the total of anthropogenic emissions of greenhouse gases for the transport and industrial sectors. This is the only part of the examples that demonstrate the importance of ecosystems and bioresources in the human life. But the market approach of the use of natural resources gives a distorted picture of their true value. And as a result, land degradation occurs Species and animals are reduced. Resources are depleted. The Arau Sea was once the fourth largest lake in the world. However, in the 20th century, a tragedy occurred. The lake began to dry up rapidly. The desiccation of the sea had a detrimental effect on the climate of the region. Almost all kinds of fish disappeared. The tragedy of the Arau Sea also impacted the lives of the people in the form of the loss of jobs, growth of diseases as well. In the place where people once fished, deserted ships and camels are now wandering about. Today, under the same threat of extinction in the natural pearl of Kazakhstan, Lake Balhash. Its uniqueness lies in the fact that the water here is half fresh and half salty. Due to the anthropogenic impact, one of the largest lakes in the world inhabited by more than 20 species of fish and 120 species of birds is rapidly drying up. And these are Saigas, the most ancient nomads of the Kazakh steppes. It's amazing but once these animals graze side by side with mammoths and manage to survive the ice age. Once in Kazakhstan, there were 2 million saigas, today a little more than 100,000. 
poachers and diseases contribute to the disappearance of the species. The mass die-off of saiga is not unusual. Two years ago, 200,000 representatives of the famous Betpak Dala population died. According to the study, the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment in Kazakhstan, with a 10% increase in welfare, the decrease in natural wealth exceeds 20%. The government of Kazakhstan is taking measures to restore unique ecosystems, populations of rare animals, and plant areas. Kazakhstan is actively pursuing a transition to a green economy that must reduce the risk from global environmental threats through the sustainable use of natural resources and green technologies. The United Nations Development Program is making a significant contribution to the sustainable development of Kazakhstan through the implementation of projects such as Biofin. The global initiative of Biofin has been successfully implemented in more than 30 countries of the world. In Kazakhstan, Biofin started in 2013 with the financial support of the European Union, the government of Switzerland, and the government of Germany. Biofin is aimed at identifying a funding gap in developing long-term resource mobilization policies for the conservation of biodiversity and ecosystems. The statistics show that the source of more than 90% of the located funds is the state budget. The deficit is more than 50% annually. The main cause of the problem lies in the absence in the current time of the strategic document that considers biodiversity and ecosystems in the context of industries as a part of a policy of sustainable green development. To cover the deficit of some public money is not enough. A new approach is needed to solve the problem. Given the successful global practice to address the funding shortfalls, Biofin offers several new economic instruments. These are payments for ecosystem services, biodiversity offsets, tax incentives, subsidies, and forest certification. Payments for ecosystem services are a new instrument that was not previously practiced in Kazakhstan. This is not a tax, it is voluntary earmark contributions from nature users for the conservation and sustainable use of ecosystem services. For example, according to experts from Biofin, the economic value of the ecosystem services of Ilye Balkhas Nature Reserve is more than 25 million US dollars. There are ecosystem services such as fresh water, clean air, fish, wood, pastures, recreation, protection from soil erosion. Today, their security is provided by the state but it is extremely necessary to involve the main consumers of the region's natural resources, such as Kapshagai Hydroelectric Power Station, the Balhash Mining and Metallurgical Combine, tourists, tour operators, farmers, hunting farms, fishermen, rice growers, and livestock keepers. Financing today for measures to conserve forest and water resources on their part will help to avoid losses and multi-million dollar expenses for restoration in the future. The biodiversity offsets, which can be applied to the oil and gas industry, are also relevant for Kazakhstan. In Kazakhstan, part of the oil and gas fields are bordered or are located in specially protected natural areas, which are habitats of endangered species of animals and red book plants. Ustert region was selected for testing of the biodiversity offsets. Here has launched a major investment project to develop a gas field, Gansu. According to scientists, the exploration and production of gas at Kansu will lead to the loss of natural habitat of Argalib, the modification of migration routes for wild animals, the trampling of endemic of plants, and the compaction of Ustyurt Plateau's soil. In connection with the increased presence of people along the corridor of access to the deposit, the risk of illegal hunting for animals increases. To address this issue, Biofin proposes two areas of compensation measures, restoration of grassland ecosystems and conservation of key animal species of Ustyurt Plateau. In 2017, at the initiative of Biofin, payments for forest ecosystem services and biodiversity offsets are included in the forest code 
in the law of the Republic of Kazakhstan on the specially protected natural areas as one of the sources of financing biodiversity and ecosystems in Kazakhstan. Special attention should be paid to the instruments of tax incentives. Biofin experts have developed five tax incentives for the development of hunting, organic farming, and ecotourism. Experts' forecasts show that tax incentives can mobilize more than $19 million a year. At the same time, as an effective solution to biodiversity conservation, it is necessary to introduce the targeting of tax payments through funds. Subsidies as well as tax incentives stimulate the private sector to sustainable environmental management. Therefore, Biofin recommends that the government of Kazakhstan revise the current rules for granting subsidies for development of forestry and fishery sectors, and additionally offers five new directions of state subsidies in forestry, fisheries, and organic agriculture. These measures can provide more than 20% coverage of biodiversity financing gap. To mobilize resources, the mechanism of voluntary forest certification is also relevant. Its advantages are improving the image and investment attractiveness of the forestry sector, exporting forest products, increasing the share of forest products in the gross domestic product, and developing environmentally responsible business. The forest cover of the territory of Kazakhstan is 4.6% or more than 12 million hectares. Forests provide the population with various goods, and their value should be taken into account in the development of the country's green economy. The introduction of new economic mechanisms in the management of ecosystems and biodiversity in the first place requires political will. Kazakhstan has already chosen the path of sustainable development and has high potential for integrating the recommendations of Biofin into practice of sectorial planning. When there is an understanding where to move, when all stakeholders are ready to join forces and the state is meeting halfway. Then it is possible to achieve the most ambitious goals.